Hi, how's it going guys? Got another backpack review for you. Today we're going to be talking about the Kelty Red Wing 2900. Uh, before I start, let me just say a couple of things. First off, uh, I just got this backpack, so I don't have any experience with this on the road. Although I'll probably be using it for my next uh, backpacking trip, which will be in Thailand next month. So if I have any experiences between uh, then and now that are different from my initial impressions, I'll either annotate this video or I'll just shoot a new one. Uh, the second thing is, this particular model is discontinued. Uh, Kelty continues to make the Red Wing, although each year they make little changes. So as I'm going through the different features of this pack, I'll try to list any differences between this model and the current one. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, as the name suggests, the Red Wing 2900 holds 2900 cubic inches of space in the main compartment, which is about 47.5 liters. And in addition to that, the side pockets hold another, I'd say, 5 liters. Uh, the pack itself is made of a lightweight yet durable Cordura, and the bottom part of the pack, since it's going to be encountering the most wear, is made of a heavier uh, polyester, and it feels more like canvas, but uh, yeah, it feels pretty durable. For the suspension, you have shoulder straps with an attachable sternum strap. Now, one thing I really like about the uh, Red Wing is Kelty got it right with the shoulder straps. Uh, they're not too thick. They are padded and they are comfortable to wear, but they're not overly bulky like some of the other models that I've worn. Um, they're well placed and uh, they do the job well and they don't take up too much space, which is a good thing. The waist belt is very comfortable uh, and also, just like the shoulder straps, they're not too thick. fit along quite nicely. And another thing I like is the way they work with the suspension for the waist belt is after you've attached it, like any other waist belt, it makes the weight of the pack sit on the top of your hips, but and this is just a little nice thing, is the fact that you don't have to pull the straps in towards the middle to tighten the belt. You pull them out because of the way the straps are looped to each other. So I thought that was a nice feature. And another thing that I really like is the fact that the waist belt is removable. Uh, you don't see that too often with uh, medium-sized backpacks these days. Usually they're attached to the main pack. But what the reason I like this is that you're not always going to have your backpack completely full. Sometimes it'll only be halfway full which means it'll be lightweight and you're not going to need the waist belt to help distribute uh, the pack's weight across your back. Um, and when you don't need the waist belt, it actually gets in the way. It feels a little bit bulky and say you're using this as a carry-on on an airplane, this actually this waist belt makes it harder for you to fit your pack in the frame at the checkout counter to prove that you can take this as a carry-on. So it's nice to be able to take this out when you don't need it, put it inside your main pack and then just put it back on whenever you do need it. So it's a good option. The backing of the pack itself is a high density foam and it's very comfortable. And the lower part of the pack is a suede hypalong, which is a synthetic rubber, which is very durable. Uh, one thing you'll notice is at the top and bottom of the pack you have hypalong lash points. That is a good option. Um, I usually try to put all my gear inside of the pack in order to keep it closer to my body and more comfortable to carry. Although, uh, if you have something bulky like, say, a sleeping bag or a tent or uh, a roll mat that you need to put in and it won't attach, go inside of your bag, you can attach it to the top and the bottom of your bag, so it's nice. You can just lash it through this point right here, loop it through underneath, and then around the roll mat, and then there you go. You can have it. Um, so that's always a nice option to have these lash points, even if you're not going to use them. They're there if you do need them. the back part of the bag, you have an elastic bungee cord, ice axe loop, and a daisy chain. Like I said before, I try to fit all my items inside of the pack to keep it close to my body, but it is nice to have the option of being able to attach things to the outside of the pack if you do need them. Uh, you have two front pockets. Right here you have a zippered front pocket, like so, fit things into. It tends, it's flat and it doesn't extend from the body of the pack, so you might want to keep things that are relatively flat right here. And for the middle compartment, just open this up. You have what looks to be uh, a school organizer type setup. Now one thing Kelty did right is that uh, they put the organizer on the body of the pack and not on the flap. Uh, the problem that some packs have is they put the organizer on the flap and that happens is when you open up the flap it turns upside down and whatever pencils and pens and papers that you have in the organizer spill out. By putting in the body of the pack everything stays upright so good job for Kelty. This particular organizer has this little mesh zipper pocket and then a smaller pocket behind it. 
some pen and pencil holders, a little pocket right here, along with a quick point for attaching, say, a key ring or a flashlight. So, good job with the middle compartment for you. By Kelsey. Uh, I should mention that in the newer model, this front pocket actually opens goes all the way to the top, so you have a little bit more room and it zips from the side, and there's no elastic bungee cord. Instead, you have the daisy chain going all the way down to the bottom, uh, so you have more lash points. Um, for the side pockets, I love the side pockets. They did a really good job with that. If you'll notice it right here, when I open the side pocket, it's a lot of room and it extends from the outer part of the pack so you get more room in addition to the main pack and in addition to that the good right is their flow through which means you can stick things in underneath the side pockets between it and the main pack and not take up any extra room right here you have mesh pockets and this is the same for either side one thing I don't like is the mesh pockets are quite small they're only about two three inches tall and uh, they're not elastic they're not expandable. And they made that with the assumption that you're going to stick things and have them rest in the mesh pocket. You're going to use this side compression strap to hold it in against the pack. And if it's even longer, you're going to have it slide up underneath the side, uh, side pockets. Uh, I much prefer if the mesh pockets were taller, like if they went all the way up to underneath the side pockets, and then that they had the option of being elastic. Uh, let me show you how useful this can be. Uh, my buddies and I, we like to go camping sometimes, and sometimes we like to go and practice martial arts. So I'm going to use this escrima stick as an example. If I wanted to, I could just slide it in here underneath the side pocket through the compression strap into the mesh pocket. It's held securely like so. And I, if I need to access it, I could just pull it out without having to open any other pockets. It's a great thing. Um, you could stick any long object in here that you don't want to take up room in your main pack. So you could stick, say, a fishing pole or uh, a hatchet for cutting wood. So it's a nice option. One thing I should mention is that in the newer model of Red Wing, uh, they got the mesh pocket right. It is larger. It extends all the way to underneath the side pocket and it is elastic, so they got that right. However, they took out the flow-through option for the side pocket, so it's really up to you. If you don't really care to have this little uh, feature and uh, having the larger mesh pockets are fine, then the newer model will suit you just fine. Let's see here. In addition to this compression straps here, you have compression straps on the top side of the pack when it's not in use to flatten out the pack. So you have a strap here at the bottom, compression strap at the top. And that is the exterior of the pack. Uh, tune in for part two and I'll go on the interior.